So we're gonna do a bunch of comparisons between the electronic image stabilization built into the Samsung S23 versus using the phone on the actual gimbal. So let's get started. By the way, I recommend using the chapter links to quickly jump to a certain test if you wanna do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. You wanna get that nice angled grip over here. Gonna turn it to landscape. So we're gonna test through different focal lengths. We're gonna do the ultra wide, the wide angle, and then the telephoto zoom lens on this S23. So for the first test, we're gonna use Insta360's app. We're gonna use the 4K30 setting, and it's gonna be at 1X zoom. So that means it's gonna be on the wide angle lens. And I'm just gonna walk at a normal pace. Try to do a little bit of ninja walking. And we're gonna use this limited space because we want to make it as scientific as possible and not conflate the results. All right, now we're gonna to switch to ultra wide. And I'm holding the camera in the same spot all the time, trying to do at least my best. And now we're in telephoto. Now, one thing you'll notice is as I walk back, it's a lot harder to do ninja walks. So now I'm just gonna use the native Samsung S23 app. I'm not gonna use the Insta360 app and I'm gonna use the gimbal and then let's compare that now. So now it's just pure mechanical and pure raw uh, app, no Insta360 processing or anything like that. And we're still in pro video mode, which I think has the best colors in, in the Samsung camera app. So let's try this now. And this is wide angle. All right, now we switch to ultra wide. All right, and now we're on telephoto. And the footage is gonna be naturally a lot shakier. Now let's switch to handheld mode and I'm just gonna use the optical image stabilization. So basically no image stabilization. So turn this off, put it like this, put it down and then just twist it. So this thing is really nice and pocketable. You can put it in your pocket, very nice and small, compact. All right, now let's test with just the camera. Now, before we go into the handheld test with the S23, I do want to call out the fact that the main rear sensor in the telephoto zoom lens has optical image stabilization. What that means is that it doesn't rely on any digital crop, any electronic image stabilization. So even though you turn off video stabilization in the settings of the S23, you do get some level of stabilization, which is quite nice. Do note that the rear ultra wide does not have optical image stabilization along with the front selfie camera. In this shot, we're handheld on the S23, and I've disabled all electronic image stabilization. However, the wide angle lens does have a built-in optical. It's a mechanical image stabilization. Now we're switching to ultra wide. Now I'm gonna to switch to telephoto. All right, so let's do all those tests again on the native Samsung S23 camera app, except I'm gonna turn on image stabilization. Okay, now we switch to ultra wide, and this is electronic image stabilization. Now we switch to telephoto.
So now let's test the selfie mode in the Insta360 app using the front facing camera and then followed by using the rear main sensor. All right, now we're in selfie mode and because it's cropped in a little bit because it's not such a wide angle lens on the front selfie, I am using the selfie stick. And this selfie stick is extremely useful in certain situations. Like how smooth that shot is, really good running. Now I'm filming with the front sensor camera, selfie camera. I can, I can frame myself now. So now I turned on video stabilization and this is going to be a little bit better, but it's going to crop in. So I can't get that really wide angle. Whereas with the Insta360, I can get that selfie stick. Now let's switch to the rear main sensor and try to get a selfie shot from that angle. So I can use the hand gesture or I can just single press on the trigger. Because I'm using the rear sensor, I can't see myself, but I want to get tracking, so I'm going to track. And now I know I'm tracked and I'm using the best sensor. I'm using the main wide angle sensor. I'm not using selfie camera, so I'm going to get the best color reproduction, the, ble the best low light performance. So yeah, let's see how this works. Okay, so Insta360 app, rear sensor, wide, wide angle, zoom stick, and I'm walking. How's that? All right, so I'm gonna handhold the camera and I'm filming with a wide angle pro video mode native Samsung app. Uh, it's gonna be harder to get this stabilized. Now, video stabilization is on. We're using the rear main sensor for the selfie mode with the native Samsung app. So for shits and giggles, let's turn on video stabilization, EIS, in the Samsung S23 app. Let's switch to wide angle and let's run really fast with the camera. Okay, I'm running. <laughs> I fell down. Holy sh Okay, so we can do millions of tests. We can do telephoto, running tests, ultra wide tests. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna stop there and let's compare it in the studio and let's see how the footage looks and compares. Also, one thing I wanna check out is when you're filming through the Insta360 app, is there a difference between filming on the native Samsung camera app versus the Insta360 app? Are they doing some post-processing or something like that? We'll find out. So after having reviewed all the footage using chapter timestamps to jump between each one, I've drawn some interesting insights and conclusions. Number one, it appears that the Insta360 app is leveraging EIS, electronic image stabilization, on top of the gimbal stabilization. I noticed this exactly when I was doing the rear wide angle selfie test, where despite using the selfie stick, the shot was still quite tight on my head. I kind of wish there was an option to disable this in the Insta360 app, but thankfully we can just use our own native OEM camera app. In my case, it's the Samsung camera app. Point number two. This one is obvious, but the hardware gimbal stabilization is a huge improvement over handheld. Now, the S23's electronic image stabilization or video stabilization is quite amazing, but I don't like how it punches in the image and degrades the image quality and reduces my field of view. I also noticed with the S23 when I disable EIS but I maintain optical image stabilization that the corners of the image wobble a lot and it's very distracting, very annoying. But when you use the flow gimbal, it eliminates this. Now, to be fair, when I was handling the smartphone camera, I wasn't using a selfie stick. So every time I walked, all that vibration and jerky motion is directly translated into the camera. It'd be interesting to run the, all these tests again just using a normal selfie stick with the smartphone camera. In any case, the Insta360 Fold really shines in low light situations or when you're running very aggressively with the camera. In this shot, there's actually three forms of stabilization in all happening at the same time. First, you have the S23's rear main sensor mechanical op optical image stabilization, then the software S23 electronic image stabilization, then the flow or the gimbal okay, itself, right. which makes this shot really super impressive. Near the end of the slip, I actually trip and fall down and the footage still looks so smooth. <laughs> I fell down, holy sh So in conclusion, yes, mechanical gimbals are still definitely relevant in this day and age, especially in low light scenarios where you want to avoid micro genders, maintain the best video quality, maintain your field of view, not to mention keep a more professional horizon lock when you're moving the camera. 
With the bonus AI tracking features, selfie stick, tripod, the Insta360 Flow is way more than just an easy to use self-balancing gimbal. By the way, I covered all these features in my in-depth review of the Insta360 Flow on my main channel. Be sure to check it out. I'll leave links in the description. And thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, please give a like and I'll see you in the next video.